Welcome to our session today, Interactive Rubrics, Providing Consistent and Quality Feedback in Blackboard Courses. We're so glad that you've joined us. Uh, those of you that are participating live during our online workshop today, um, as well as those of you who may be viewing the archive of today's session. Either way, we're really glad to have you uh, experiencing this content. We hope it's helpful and uh, really glad that you've taken time out of your schedule to um, take advantage of this information. Uh, my name is Jason Rohde, and I am uh, Director of the Faculty Development and Instructional Design Center here at Northern Illinois University, and uh, glad to be with you here today leading this session um, or as we look at interactive rubrics. Uh, if you have further questions that I, we don't get a chance to get to today during the live session or, again, if you're viewing the archive, uh, certainly feel free to follow up, uh, whether through email. Um, I'll provide my phone number as well at the end of the session here today if, if you prefer to uh, give me a call. So today our, uh, our objectives for our workshop are to, to really take a look at the interactive rubrics tool in Blackboard. So we're going to explore this, this feature a little bit and take a look at uh, several sample interactive rubrics. We'll then look at the steps for creating an interactive rubric. So we'll go through the steps of how do you create one, or how can you reuse a pre-existing rubric, and then how do you apply that to an assignment for grading? And there's different kinds of assignments in Blackboard, uh, many of which you can use the interactive rubrics tool with, and we'll, we'll get into more detail on that. And then also demonstrate how to use a rubric within a Blackboard course when it comes to grading. So we'll, we'll show you the uh, kind of the grading workflow when you use an interactive rubric with an assignment as well as how you might go about sharing that rubric with others. So maybe you have a great rubric that uh, you've put together in Blackboard and you want to share with a colleague. It's very simple to do that and I'll, I'll show you that here today as well. So we've got quite a bit to get to. We're going to uh, jump right in here with talking about the rubrics tool. So this is a tool that, as I mentioned, is available in Blackboard and we've had it now for uh, a little over a year here at NIU and, and uh, continues to be a very popular tool for faculty. It's a great time-saving tool, but also a great tool um, for uh, working with your students and, and empowering them to see uh, uh, improve themselves by you giving them quality feedback, and that's what we want to take a look at today. This tool is found within the control panel area in Blackboard. So when you're in a Blackboard course, there's this kind of this gray area that's beneath the course menu. Uh, when you go to that area and you click on uh, what says course tools, when you click on that, this, this menu kind of expands down and there are all of the Blackboard course tools are here. And the tool that we're going to focus on today is the rubrics tool. Um, I think that's what I'll refer to it for the rest of our time here together is the, the rubrics tool, um, also referred to as uh, interactive uh, rubrics. Now, so why would you want to use this rubrics tool? Well, uh, as we lay the foundation here for our, our time together, uh, you know, a rubric is a tool for evaluation. It, it simply lists the evaluation criteria for a particular assignment. Uh, it helps the students to organize their efforts because they're able to see exactly what the requirements are for that uh, assignment in very uh, granular terms um, that they can, can really sink their teeth into. Um, faculty can use the rubrics, uh, you know, then to help explain the evaluations to their students. So it really is a, a twofold uh, type of a tool, both in terms of helping prepare the students um, for their performance and then knowing what's expected, but then also in evaluating their uh, efforts and providing feedback for the student. Now a rubric just from a mechanic standpoint, and I'm, I'm sure many of you have, have, have used rubrics in the past in your teaching, uh, and I, you're likely familiar with the fact that rubrics are made up of just a series of rows and columns, and they can be uh, from very simple to more elaborate, but simply the within a rubric, the rows uh, correspond to the various criteria for an assignment, and you can have as many or as few criteria as you wish, but those are uh, indicated typically by the rows that you would have within the rubric, and then the columns represent the level of achievement um, that is expressed for each uh, criterion. So basically the students can see what are those uh, benchmarks, if you will, in terms of performance, uh, those different performance levels. And then typically, uh, and this is where the uh, 
uh, rubrics tool within Blackboard really shines. The fact that there is a description and a point value uh, for each of the cell in the rubric. And that helps define both for the students as well as for you as the faculty, what will that evaluation consist of and what's the score, what will be the resulting score of an assignment. So as we as we take a look at a sample rubric, just to kind of point out the anatomy, if you will, of a rubric, um, you'll notice that there are, uh, I mentioned that these rows, so you'll see a, a series of rows, and, and each row within the rubric is a criterion. So here you see in this example, uh, and this may be a little hard to read, but um, you get the idea here that this, is, this first criterion was promptness and initiative. So this row represents uh, this one criterion, and then each column that you see is the, uh, represents the levels of performance. So in this particular rubric, the first level is below expectations. And so for this one criterion, uh, the below expectations level of performance is worth zero points. Uh, the description is provided here. And then for the proficient level of performance, which is the, the next column, uh, the point value and the description is here. And then uh, the third performance level of exemplary is here with the, the point value. And so for each of the criteria, it is represented as a row within the rubric. So this is the, the, uh, the basic structure that you'll see uh, and that whether you're using a paper-based rubric or a, uh, an electronic rubric, the typical format is uh, this is what you can expect to see. And so again, we're going to focus today uh, during the workshop on the rubrics uh, specifically within Blackboard. So again, uh, back to why rubrics, um, and there are some, some very uh, straightforward responses to that question of why use rubrics in your teaching. Uh, and I myself am a huge proponent of rubrics for a number of these reasons here that I'm going to mention here. Uh, first is that there's consistent evaluations of your student work. Um, there is a common uh, means by which all of the submissions of that particular assignment are being assessed. And so there's that consistent and common uh, uh, set of standards that you are looking to judge all, uh, all the work by. Um, also, you can clarify for a student uh, why they received a particular score. But, so by the virtue of you simply using a rubric uh, to provide that feedback, uh, by using that rubric to score the performance of the student, um, the student will be able to see the areas where perhaps they uh, needed to, to do better. Um, that clarification will be there. It's also, uh, you can tie evaluation criteria to course or program objectives. And this gets uh, kind of at a, at a larger, uh, big picture use of rubrics in the sense that uh, at the program level, if you have, as you have uh, objectives specified for uh, the program or at the course level, those objectives then could be uh, systematically evaluated uh, using established rubrics within uh, the uh, various courses in the program, for example. And for me, one of the, the biggest reasons why I personally use the uh, rubrics in Blackboard for providing feedback to my students is simply the time savings. Um, as I show you the workflow for grading using a rubric, it vastly simplifies the, the grading process, makes it much more efficient for me to provide not only grade the student's work, but provide meaningful feedback. And I find that on my, uh, my teaching evaluations, my students really appreciate uh, the quality feedback that they get through the rubrics tool. So we'll take a look uh, kind of at that process, and, and hopefully you'll be able to see, get a glimpse of the time savings that are possible as you start using rubrics. Now, this rubrics tool um, that is available in Blackboard um, you can use this to evaluate a variety of different kinds of assignments. So in addition to the, uh, the traditional assignment tool, which is the, uh, where you would have students submit uh, you know, a document or, or a file electronically that they've prepared, uh, you know, paper or so forth, you can also use the rubrics tool for short answer test questions. So if you're using an online test and you have short answer questions, you can grade those using a rubric. Um, you can grade blogs journals, wikis, and discussion board threads uh, and forums all using the rubrics tool. So it's, it's a very flexible tool within your Blackboard course. 
and uh, we'll show you today uh, grading uh, in particular how you would grade a discussion board as well as a submitted assignment such as a, a paper using a, a rubric within Blackboard. But you certainly can use it for other types of assessments as mentioned here on this slide. So again, the, the rubrics tool, um, just as a, a reminder once again, is found within the uh, control panel area. You click on course tools and then you would click on the rubrics uh, link that's down here that you'd find in this menu. And what happens when you do that is you come to this rubrics page. And in a little bit I'm going to take you inside of Blackboard so you'll, you'll get a better glimpse at, at what this looks like. But just to give you a, a quick overview here, so the rubrics tool looks something like this. And from this page, you'll notice that you have a listing of any of the rubrics that have previously been created in your course. Now, the, the Blackboard rubrics are especially formatted to uh, be not only used within a Blackboard course, but reused. So they can be exported uh, from Blackboard and put into uh, another Blackboard course. I mentioned earlier uh, today that you can share rubrics very easily. And the, the way that you can do that is you can select them from within this list, and then you have the option to, there is an export button. Uh, which I'll show you in, when we get into Blackboard, but you would export, you click on that, and you can download a copy of your uh, rubric that you've prepared within Blackboard. It is uh, formatted then to be imported into another Blackboard course, uh, which makes it really easy to share rubrics with colleagues. Um, but you can certainly, and what, what you likely want to do is create a rubric. Uh, you can create one from scratch. You can also, uh, there's a button in the rubrics panel here to import a rubric. So if you have a, a previously created rubric, uh, and it has to be created in Blackboard, it has to be formatted for Blackboard, but once you've set that rubric up, you can easily import that into your course. So that's a, this is an overview of the kind of the rubrics interface and the, the rubric space here as you get started working with rubrics. Now, when it comes to grading with a rubric, and this is where rubrics really shine, uh, in, in the sense that within Blackboard, the rubrics tool is tightly integrated into the various types of assignments that you can have for your students. So here you see an example of a discussion forum that is being graded. So this is a graded discussion board, and, and I'll show you this in greater detail when we go into Blackboard. But here you can see a, a uh, submissions for a particular student, and uh, you see on the, the, the left here, a collection of the student's contributions. And then over here on the right, uh, you see what's called uh, inline grading using a rubric. So here you can see, instead of just putting a score for this student, I have the ability here to grade using a rubric. So the reason we call these interactive rubrics is because uh, just like you might imagine you know, clicking to uh, select different levels of performance, you can do that directly as you're submitting the grade. So here you can see for this, this student, each of the levels of performance for a given criteria are listed here. So for this first criterion, there are the three levels of performance. I can select one of those levels, and as I scroll through, I can very easily select the other levels of performance. There is also a feedback uh, box, an area where I can add additional comments and feedback. Uh, in addition to just giving the student and selecting a level of performance, I can give detailed feedback to the student, which, which is really helpful in, in helping them get a better sense of where they can improve moving forward. And again, I'm going to show you actually what this looks like in better detail in Blackboard in just a moment. But I did want to just give you a, a snapshot here. Um, so you get a sense of, as I'm referring to inline grading uh, using a rubric, this is really what I'm referring to is the ability to, to put in a score uh, very easily simply by selecting those levels of performance uh, when you've assigned a rubric to an assignment. Now. Uh, we have uh, put together at the Faculty Development and Instructional Design Center a, a great resource page about interactive rubrics in Blackboard. And I, I've given you the link here. I'm going to go ahead and paste it into the text chat. So you'll have it as well. And you can refer to um, something you may want to bookmark. There's step-by-step um, -step tutorials for what I'm going to show you now and what we're going to experience together. Uh, we have documented in, in tutorials that you can actually watch um, and actually come back and, and take a look at. Also on this resource page, um, something I'll point out is a link to shared rubrics from other higher ed institutions. So 
uh, Blackboard has a collection of uh, Blackboard formatted rubrics that, that uh, other colleagues have created and shared, and you can easily download those and, and make use of those. That's what I'm going to refer to um, here today. So Isabel asked the question, does the discussion grading rubric grade more than one thread in a forum? For example, if it has a discussion forum that lasts more than one week and the number of posts are required. Great question, Isabel. Um, and when I, when I get to the discussion board, let me answer that question uh, when we're in the context of applying the rubric and setting up the grading. Because it, it really depends, Isabel, on how you enable the grading on the forum. If you set up the forum to be graded by uh, threads, then you could grade each of the separate threads. So for example, maybe, maybe there's, um, you want them to post uh, respond to several different questions, and you post the initial questions and have them respond. Um, if you grade by threads and you, you don't give them the ability to create new ones, but to simply reply to what you've started, um, you could definitely grade by separate threads. Um, what, what typically what faculty do, and what, what I've done in my courses, is I grade by the forum. So uh, in this example where you've asked, you know, you have a forum that lasts for more than a week, and you have multiple posts. If you want to give them a single score, um, you know, for all of that, yes, when you click the grade, uh, the button and you grade with the rubric, you can see all of their posts for, you know, as, as long a time period as you wish and provide them that score. So, um, right, so if you want to, it depends, Isabel, you follow up as you, you grade by form, but you have more than one thread in each form, uh, which is uh, correct in the sense that if you want to grade them separately, give them a separate score for each thread, then you'll want to, when you enable grading for the discussion forum, you want to have grading be done by thread instead of by uh, forum. And then you can give them um, separate. OK, so one grade per forum. As long as you have it set up that way, Isabel, you'll be, you'll be all set. And yes, you can use the, the rubric to grade. Uh, it'll collect all of the posts for that particular forum. So yep, and I'll show you how that works. Uh, here in, in just a moment. So perfect segue into where we're headed uh, now to transition. So what I, what I thought I would do is actually go into Blackboard and we'll, we'll demo um, and kind of walk through uh, getting started using the, the rubrics in Blackboard. So uh, we'll kind of walk you through how you would create a rubric uh, from scratch as well as reuse an existing one. Um, we'll look at how you add it to an assessment. So I have a, a couple of sample assessments set up in the course, a uh, sample Blackboard course we'll look at. Um, we'll also take a look at how you grade using the rubric. So we'll look at, in particular, grading a discussion forum, uh, as Isabel, you've uh, mentioned already, as well as then uh, grading a submitted assignment, like a paper uh, or, or some other type of electronic document that you want the students to submit. Um, and then we'll also talk about how do you export a rubric out, how do you make use of it easily um, in another course. So that's what we'll take a look at here. And, and by all means, as we go through, uh, certainly feel free to ask questions along the way. Um, for those of you that are connecting on your computer, um, you, you may want to, at this point, maximize your window if you've not already done so, so that to make the screen a bit larger, maybe a little easier to see. Um, and to do that, you'd click on the little square. Uh, don't click the at red X. Uh, or if you're in Firefox, a little red dot. Um, but anything that's a green dot or a, a square would maximize your window and uh, make it a little easier for you to see the, um, the Blackboard interface here. So, so with that, I'm going to go ahead and start the uh, application share here. So it'll just take me a moment to uh, share my Blackboard uh, screen with you. So. Uh, you should now hopefully be seeing uh, Blackboard here at NIU. And if you do, give me, a, again, a green check mark uh, just to confirm that you're seeing uh, Blackboard here on your uh, screen. And I'll just pause to make sure that everybody is able to chime in. Looks like um, everybody is able to see it. Great. So um, what we'll do at this point is, like I said, we'll kind of walk through Again, where you find rubrics to start with. So uh, something I'm going to do just to make it a little easier is I'm going to collapse the course menu in this course. So by clicking on the, the title here of this uh, training course that we have set up in Blackboard, I'm going to collapse that down so that we can focus here on this course management area uh, of the course. And as I mentioned, the rubrics tool is found within course tools. So I'm going to click course tools, and it will expand the uh, the menu will expand down, and um, you'll notice then 
that when that does pop down, there's all of the Blackboard tools are listed here. And the tool that we're going to focus on, obviously, is the Rubrics tool. So I just clicked on the Rubrics link that we have, and it will bring up the uh, this Rubrics uh, panel, if you will, or the kind of the, I guess you might call it even the Rubrics canvas here within the uh, course. So here you can see some existing rubrics that I already have loaded into this course. And these are actually all sample rubrics that, as I mentioned, uh, other faculty have shared. And there's a great place you can go to, to download these samples and to actually put them in your own course. And that is to go to blackboard.com slash rubrics. And I'm going to go ahead and I'll put that link in the text chat as well. Um, so that you have it there. But this is just a shortcut to this uh, page where faculty just like you have shared a rubric that they've actually created for use in their course. So you can see in this listing a, a variety of different rubrics. And for each rubric, there is a download uh, link uh, that you'll find. And so you can click on that link. You can download it to your computer. And this is a Blackboard formatted rubric. It's actually a, a zip file with the extension .zip, uh, but this is a rubric that you can then import into your Blackboard course. And uh, I'm going to show you what that process is like in, in just a moment here. So this is a great place if you're just wanting to get a sense of what's possible in the sense of using rubrics. You may want to download all of these and put them into your own course and uh, start from there. Because what you can do after you've done that, and I'm going to close that, that window here, so we're back in our Blackboard course, is you can then go in and you can take a look at an existing uh, rubric. So here, to save time, I've already imported in uh, several of those sample rubrics. And I'm going to take a look at this one right here, this grading rubric for discussion boards, uh, the second rubric that I have in my list, uh, developed by uh, Karen Linden, a business instructor at Rowan Caribus Community College. And so if I mouse over the rubric, there's a little, it's called an action link button. It's a little circle with a down arrow. Uh, that appears, and if I click on that, I can go in and I can edit this rubric. So I can click on the edit uh, option, and here you can see uh, what has already been configured in terms of the settings for this rubric. So uh, just to very quickly uh, just kind of remind you what's available here, there is a title. Every rubric has a name, um, and then you can also add in a description. So uh, especially when it comes to sharing a rubric, you can provide uh, a little background about how the rubric was used or who developed it. That's where you could, you could enter that if, info if you would like. And then uh, beneath that is really the uh, kind of the, the nuts and bolts, if you will, of the rubric. And to give us a little more space, I'm going to collapse down our uh, Blackboard menu here simply by uh, putting my mouse between the menu and the uh, body of our Blackboard page. I'm going to click and uh, collapse down the menu so we've got a little more space to to focus here on the, the rubric itself. So here you can see uh, the rubric detail. Um, so as I mentioned, you've got the, uh, the, the structure here, whereas each of the criteria for your rubric is a row. And we have promptness and initiative, mechanics of writing, and so forth. And then you have the levels of achievement are listed as columns. And this currently, there are three columns right here. Now, this is completely customizable. And you might say, well, you know, I, I don't necessarily use points. I just want to use a rubric more as to give them a sense of overall performance, but not use points. You can be really uh, flexible in how you make use of your rubric. Uh, you can, instead of points, you can have the rubric be worth no points. Uh, it could be worth a point range. And that's the, this option that you have here under next to rubric type. If you, when you click on that, uh, the window that appears um, will have options, will say things like no points. Uh, this, this rubric is worth, has, uh, currently is worth points. Uh, but I could select a point range. I could select a percentage uh, or a percent range. And it just depends on how I want to um, use it in terms of assigning grades. That's really where this comes into play. I typically use points because uh, points translate well in my uh, in my grade center to the various assignments that I use, and so I, I typically stick with points. But you could, if I click no points, you'll notice that now the point option disappears from my rubric, and it's gone. Uh, if I click points and bring it back, 
Now you can see that those point options are there. Now beneath that, um, again, are the, the various criteria. And maybe I want to add another criteria. So I could simply click on the uh, Add a Row button up here. And notice that there's now a new row at the bottom of my rubric. And anywhere where you see the little circle with the down arrow, the Action Link uh, button, uh, is where you click on to then edit. So I can edit the name of my criteria. And um, uh, let's say that this is, I already have promptness. I was going to use that as an example. I'm just going to be unoriginal and call this my sample criterion. Um, and so I would place that there, and then I would enter what's my point value uh, for the different levels of performance, and then my descriptor uh, specifying what constitutes that particular level of performance. Um, so simply I can type that right in um, into these fields, and I'm just going to just type a few, just some placeholders here so you get a sense of uh, it's very simple. There's no coding or programming necessary to be able to do this, um, and it's listed there. And just as easily as I added this row, I can delete it. Going back to uh, the name of that row, I can click on the action link button, and I can delete this row, and now it's been removed from my rubric. Now, as easily as we added a row, we can also add columns. So you'll notice that by default, we see these three levels of, of achievement. But maybe we want to change these. So instead of, you know, we have below expectations, proficient, and exemplary, uh, maybe we want this to be, um, maybe this is unacceptable. So I'm going to edit these. Um, so we'll, maybe this is going to be unacceptable. Maybe proficient. Instead of uh, proficient, maybe we want this to be uh, meets expectations. And maybe exemplary is going to exceed expectations. And I have to just click Save after that. Um, and maybe I want to have a fourth, uh, you know, another uh, level of achievement here. So I can simply add another column. And maybe I'll, I'll edit this. And maybe instead of, uh, we've got unacceptable, we have maybe approaching ex expectations. And I want this to then uh, obviously, it's going to come between my uh, unacceptable and my meets expectations. So I add my columns, I add my rows, and then I can reorder these. So you can reorder both the uh, columns, the levels of achievement, as well as the criteria, uh, simply by clicking the, the, the button to reorder. So you see a, where it has the kind of the two arrows kind of going in either direction. That's the indication that we're going to reorder. So we click on that button to open the reorder panel. And uh, perhaps I want approaching expectations to be uh, between my unacceptable and meets expectations. And click Submit. And just like that, now I have my, my columns reordered. And maybe uh, you prefer to have the highest level of achievement all the way to the left and then kind of decreasing uh, to the right, which at times sometimes may make sense, uh, something I prefer to do just so it's easier for the students to see immediately kind of what's that highest level of performance, because um, I obviously want them to focus on that, and I suspect you probably do too. You want all your students to meet that, that level of achievement. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that to this particular rubric. So I'm going to click on the level of achievement one more time, and I'm going to move uh, exceeds expectations all the way to the left. I'm going to then move unacceptable all the way to the right and swap the meets expectations with approaching expectations. So you can see what I've done. I've reordered them the way I want. Click Submit, and now I have my rubric kind of customized here. So as you get started creating a rubric, you may want to import one of those samples from uh, that other faculty have shared and work from that, because then you can work backwards. You can come in, um, you can adjust point values, um, you can tweak the, uh, the various uh, descriptors here for the different levels of, of achievement. And then when you're ready, you click the Submit button to save your, uh, your rubric. And you'll see a, a kind of a notation that the rubric has been edited. And uh, the, kind of that confirmation is this green bar up here that you see at the top of the, 
the rubrics panel. Now I mentioned that you can how easy it is to import a rubric. So let me show you that process. So when you have a rubric that you've saved, uh, maybe a colleague has shared it with you and you have that Blackboard formatted zip file, all you have to do within the rubrics area is click on this import rubric button. Uh, so I'm going to click on that. And from this point, what you can do is browse my computer. So I just have to locate uh, once this page loads, and you'll see this, this option here to import a rubric. We're going to browse my computer. And I'm just going to look to my computer, and it's actually saved in my downloads uh, folder here. Here's that file. And it needs to be a .zip file, a Blackboard formatted zip file. So click on that. I'm going to click Choose and click Submit. And this is an actual rubric I uh, used in a course I taught this past fall uh, online for a, a blog activity. And here you can see now this new rubric has been added called Media Exploration Rubric. And uh, rubric I used for evaluating some assignments uh, this past fall in my online course. I can edit this rubric. And here you can see uh, the rubric is set up. So here you can see in this particular example I had four levels of achievement. Uh, from exceeds expectations, meets below expectations and not acceptable. And then I had the, uh, the various levels of, uh, or, or various criteria, excuse me, for this particular rubric. And I used, I had uh, about, I think I had eight different assignments, um, this type of an assignment. And I used the same rubric for all eight. Um, so I, I tried to make it, um, the rubrics flexible so that I didn't have to have a separate rubric for every separate assignment. Uh, you certainly could have separate rubrics for separate assignments, um, but from a, just from a, a workload and a, an ease of use, I think it's helpful if you can reuse a rubric. Um, it, it certainly saves you even more time as you're setting those up. Uh, Isabel, you asked, can one create a rubric in Word and then import? Um, there is not, unfortunately, an easy way to import a Word formatted rubric. So what I've done, I've actually developed my rubrics in Word. Um, and then I just, in Blackboard, I'm, I'm copying and pasting in the various cells. So it's a little tedious the first time you set it up, but after you've done that, once you have it formatted for Blackboard, it's very easy then to reuse it. And I, from now on, at this point on, I don't ever really start from scratch. I usually have a, a working rubric that I'm changing. Um, so I think it is, Isabel, best to start with a rubric and then just change it as you go. I think it's just, it's a big time saver. Um, so I'm going to hit cancel, and, and I'll just show you, if you want to create one from scratch, you simply go in, you click Create Rubric, uh, the Create Rubric button, and after you have clicked on that, let me go back um, to let, this, let things catch up here. So again, you click on the, uh, when you're at your list of rubrics, and you click on the Create Rubric uh, button, and you, you simply give your rubric a name, and uh, again, a description, and it gives you a placeholder to start with. You'll see um, there are some formatting items. Uh, you know, you have basically there are three sample uh, criteria: formatting, organization, grammar, and then you have uh, three sample levels of achievement. And certainly, you can delete uh, as many, add as many as you want. But that's the structure that you'll work from. Now, in Blackboard, so as we go back out to the kind of our rubrics area, the front page of the rubric. Um, or rubrics canvas, if you will. As you seek to use rubrics in your course, it's really a two-step process. Uh, you want to get the rubrics set up initially, uh, and then you assign them to a particular assignment that you may have already deployed in your course. So the example I'm going to show you, first of all, is, is discussion, and using a rubric for discussion. So I mentioned this, this rubric for grading discussion boards here uh, that we took a look at a little earlier. Uh, let's say that we want to use that rubric to grade some discussion that we, uh, you know, an assigned discussion that we have online. So what we would do is we have to make sure that we have the rubric all set up the way we want. Um, and so you, you know, you can go in, you can edit a rubric, and as long as the rubric hasn't already been assigned to um, or associated with a particular assignment, you can go in and you can continue to make changes. Um, so I could go in and, and even this sample one that I have here, um, I could go through and delete that approaching expectations column that I've added, uh, hit submit, because I haven't yet associated this rubric with any other Blackboard activity. As soon as you do that, the rubric, once you associate the rubric, um, until you, uh, once you've graded with it, you can't make changes. So if I go in and edit this, this rubric above um, that I have, you'll notice that I don't have um, 
any place to, to really edit. Um, I can't click to make any changes. Um, all that I see is the rubric as it's already been set up. And, and this is obviously, once you start grading with the rubric, uh, the system is assuming that uh, you want to use those exact same, uh, that same rubric to grade all of the students that you started uh, grading with. So, um, so that's why it'll look a little different once you've uh, started grading with it. Um, you won't be able to, to make the changes at that point. So this is why it's a really good idea to, to think through and, and spend some time drafting those rubrics up front if you can um, before you start grading with them. So I'm going to cancel out of here. And uh, we're ready now to grade our discussion. So I'm going to leave uh, the rubrics area. I'm going to expand our, our menu back out so we can see our, our course menu here within our course. And so we're back to uh, Blackboard, our course, and we want to go into the discussion board area. So I have some sample discussions, and again, this is just a training course. These aren't live students or uh, live contributions to a course. Uh, but I have a forum here called Expectations that I've had students post to, and let's just say that I, I want to grade it using a rubric. So what we do is we, you, you would want to mouse over that, the name of that forum, click on the action link button, the circle with the down arrow, and we're going to edit this discussion forum. So if you're already uh, using rubrics, or you're already uh, using discussions, I should say, and you want to attach a rubric to it, uh, what you would do is go down to the forum settings, and uh, this forum is already set up to be graded. So we are, you'll notice we already have the grade discussion forum option selected. Uh, with a point value associated, uh, 10 points. But let's say that now I want to add a rubric. Um, we go to the Add Rubric button, and uh, when you mouse over that button, there is an option to either uh, select a rubric that you already have, uh, which is what I recommend you do, is, is select one that you've already finished setting up. You can technically, from this point, create a new rubric from scratch, or uh, create a rubric that's based on one of your existing rubrics. Um, uh, it's just easier for me, and I recommend for faculty, to distinguish the creation and, and editing of rubrics from the actual association with an assignment, um, so that you're, you're clear as to where you are in that process and what permissions you get to, to make changes. So what we're going to do is we're going to select one of our existing rubrics. So when I click the Select Rubric option, it pops open a window which shows me all of the rubrics that I've already set up in my course. So if you recall, the uh, grading rubric for discussion boards is the one that I want to use for this uh, Grade Mind discussion. And I click the Submit button. So now I have uh, told Blackboard this is the rubric I want to use. And Blackboard pops open a window that asks, uh, and, and is going to clarify here, that it's, uh, you are going to use the rubric's maximum points as the points possible. So uh, because the rubric I selected has a point value associated, and it's a points rubric, the system is assuming that I want this, this discussion to be worth that point value, which just still happens to be 10 points. So, um, so it's not going to change the, the point value, but, but would associate it uh, as needed, would adjust. So now you see, uh, now underneath the Add Rubrics button here, we have the rubric is listed. So here's our uh, grading rubric for discussion boards. Um, and I can actually, if I wanted to take a quick preview of it, um, this is where I could do that. So I could click on this little, it uh, looks like a, a button with two little windows on it right here. If I click on that, it'll pop open and show me uh, the rubric. And let me slide it over so that you're able to see this. Um, so you can quickly preview the rubric just as a reminder to see um, how that rubric is set up and, and what are those various uh, criteria and levels of performance. Those will be listed there. Um, this rubric is used for grading, and that's the, the rubric type. Uh, you'll see the date and time it was last edited. And this here is really important, this option that's uh, where it says show rubric to students. By default, when you add a rubric to an activity, by default, students don't see it. The default setting is no, don't show the rubric to students. However, typically what you want to do is you want to change this to either uh, one of these other options. And let me explain what these are. So the first one, yes with rubric scores, is the most transparent and, and 
really my preferred way of sharing a rubric with students. So this means that they can see when they participate in that discussion board, they can see what is the rubric that will be used to grade that discussion board, as well as what are the point values possible for the different criteria and levels of performance. The second option, yes without rubric scores, shows them just the, uh, the criteria, the levels of performance, but not the scores that you're going to be associating. So if you're not quite sure what you want that score breakdown to be, um, you could just use the yes without scores option. So they can at least still see what the uh, criteria and the performance levels are. Um, expected are. Then the third option that you have is called after grading. And what this uh, does is we'll show the students the rubric and show them their scores, but only do so after you have graded the uh, activity. And I'm all for giving the students that information up front. I think it helps them uh, be better prepared and, and perform better. Uh, and so I select the yes with rubric scores option. And once you do that, Whatever option you select, you'll see a green check mark that will appear under this show rubric to students. And that's going to be your indicator then that you do have the rubric ready for the students to be able to see that. And in this particular discussion, it is set up to grade by uh, forum. So to answer your question earlier, Isabel, this is exactly how you'd want it set up so you can grade all posts from a multi-week uh, discussion and give it a single score using a, a single rubric. So at this point I'm going to scroll to the bottom and I'm going to click the submit button. So here I have now my discussion. I get the, the green bar success. The forum has been edited and now I'm ready to get in and, and grade. And so what I'm going to do is go into my expectations um, discussion board and here you see uh, the uh, you know, the discussion board, and I'm going to, again, collapse down the course menu on the left to give us a little more space here. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm ready to grade the discussion forum. So I'm going to click on this grade discussion forum button that appears, and I see a listing of all of my students, and again, these are all just training accounts here, um, but I see these pseudo students, and I see the ability of, I see how many posts they've made, and there's a grade button for each one. So I'm going to start with uh, Louisa Alcott right here. I'm going to click, I see that she has two posts. I'm going to click the grade button. And what Blackboard then will do is it will collect on a single page. Here's all of the posts for Louisa. So I see here as I scroll down um, on the page where I see all of her posts, um, I see you know for each one the title, I see the date and time it was posted. Um, I obviously see the substance of her discussions so I can see uh, and refresh my memory as to you know what did, where did she post what did she uh, what were her contributions I see some other statistics like uh, how many posts the date of her last post um, the average post length average position and so forth now the way that the grading of a discussion board is is by default works is that it gives you the ability to um, edit the grade so I could click on this edit grade button and I could put in a score for Louisa Alcott. So I could simply, you know, click and type in a numerical score because this happens to be out of a out of 10 points. But where what's really powerful is the ability, because I've associated the rubric, um, instead of putting in the score, I can actually go ahead and use my rubric to provide that feedback. So um, I can click on the option there to uh, use the rubric and it pops open and you will see now the um, each of the uh, criterion uh, are listed. So here's criterion one, promptness and initiative, and here I see the three levels of performance. Um, and if I need a refresher as to what those descriptions are, uh, I can click on the checkbox here to show descriptions, and I see beneath the uh, each level of performance, I see the description that I've provided. Uh, kind of reminding me, how did I say I was going to be grading these? What am I looking for? Um, and then because this is a, indeed an interactive rubric, I can simply click uh, the uh, radio button for that particular uh, performance level. And I can scroll down to the next criteria, uh, criterion two, mechanics of writing, and perhaps this is meets expectations, I can, and so forth. And I can go through, and very easily I can click to provide that feedback as I go through the rubric. And I'm not going to go through the entire uh, 
all of the, uh, the settings here. I'll just click submit to, to show you that then the score is actually populated uh, within the, uh, that's going to be placed into the grade center. So there is the ability to, it will, if you use the score option within the, the rubric, the score will be there. And I can also put in feedback. Um, so I can say, uh, great work, um, see uh, rubric for more details on areas for possible improvement. So you can provide, this is where you, you provide that additional feedback beyond even what the rubric will provide for the student. And then when you click the Save Grade uh, button, when you're grading discussions, you'll see that the, the grade is saved. I can see uh, the feedback here that I've provided. I can click the View Rubric button. It'll pop open and actually show me uh, the rubric and how I have graded um, this student. You see the kind of indication of the, the color change and the green check mark. So the student can very easily, by looking at the rubric, can see the areas where uh, perhaps they, they uh, can improve uh, for next time. So this is grading uh, discussions, and that's really as simple as it is. You can move to the next student by, by clicking this little button here to go to the next user, uh, the next student, and it's, it's very easy to quickly grade discussions here using the rubric. But let's switch gears and let's say, well, you want to use a rubric to grade a submitted uh, paper, uh, term paper or, or to that effect. Um, so I'm going to go to another type of an assignment. I'm going to click on assessments here within my course menu. And it's going to take me to a listing of some different assignments that I have uh, in this sample course. And the assignment that we're going to take a look at is called book review. So this is a, would simulate a paper that you would have students submit using the assignment tool um, in Blackboard. So um, here you see I've clicked assessments. Here's our book review uh, paper. And so what we're going to do is we're going to edit this particular uh, assignment. And again, we would have already set up our rubric. And now we're going to basically just associate that rubric with this assignment so that we can grade using it. So again, I'm going to scroll down to under grading and the area where I can associate a rubric. And I'm going to select the, uh, an existing rubric that we already have. So I'm going to click that Select Rubric option. And we have a, uh, a grading rubric. There's a sample here for grading writing assignments. So I'm just going to select that one as the rubric that I want to associate. Again, it gives me the reminder to click OK to assign the rubric's maximum points as the points possible. So I'm going to click OK. Here is my rubric. Um, and I do want to, again, remember to show the rubric to my students. So I have to tell the system to show them this rubric with the rubric scores. I do want them to see that. And uh, now I'm ready to grade with it. So I can scroll to the bottom and simply click the Submit button. So now I'm ready to go in and I've, let's say I've received, the, the students have already submitted their, um, their papers and I'm ready to grade those. So I'm going to go down to my Grade Center and I'm going to go to the Full Grade Center. So I'm going to click Grade Center and Full Grade Center and it's going to take me to my uh, Full Grade Center here within my course. So um, as once the Grade Center loads for you, you will see uh, here within Blackboard, and again, I'm going to collapse down the course menu just to make things uh, a little easier for everybody to see here. Um, here you can see the expectations, that initial uh, discussion is here, that the grade has already automatically been put in there for the students. And the assignment I want to grade is called Book Review. This is that submitted um, assignment. So to grade a submitted assignment in Blackboard, I click on the uh, action link button for that particular uh, submission. And you know a student has submitted the assignment because it has this green kind of square with the exclamation mark, the, the needs grading indicator. Um, so again, clicking on the action link button, the window that appears, I want to I grade this first, this attempt from January 9th. So when I click on that, in Blackboard now, uh, we have this inline grading, which is really nice for submitted assignments where Previously, um, in a prior version of Blackboard, you had to download the assignment and open it up offline. Now you can actually do this grading directly within the browser without downloading the file. So here's the submission that the student made, uh, the sample file that we have here, and I actually, actually put comments directly in the document. So before I even get to the rubric, as I'm reading um, the student's 
submission. Maybe I want to highlight um, this last uh, sentence here in this paragraph so I can select it using the highlighting tool. I can also add in, um, uh, I could draw, so I could, I could circle, you know, maybe I want to circle something. Um, it wasn't a, wasn't the best circling here, but uh, let me cancel that. Um, I can also add a comment. That's what this commenting feature is here. I can go in and I can add a, um, just put in a text comment and uh, click and um, say here's a sample text comment. So just to show you the, the power of being able to put this uh, do this editing directly within the document. And the students will see this. Um, they'll be able to see all of your annotations right here, as well as download these if they wish to take them offline. So I, I go through the student's paper, and I add my feedback, my comments, and now I'm ready to actually grade it. So uh, because I've associated the, the rubric with this, um, this assignment type now, I can go in and I can grade the rubric a grade using the rubric, I should say. So I could just put a score in, but because I have the rubric, if I go down here to their attempt and I mouse over this little grid option here, uh, I can click on the rubric, it pops open, and here is my rubric. So now I can go through and I can very easily, uh, again, I can, um, using the rubric, I can provide the students, uh, go ahead and mark their levels of performance. I can put feedback right here. Um, Great work. This is sample feedback inside the rubric. So here I've put that uh, feedback is directly inside of the rubric. But there's also greater feedback that can go um, kind of at the top level with the score. Um, and so this is sample feedback um, with a score outside the rubric. And so I'll show you with this, as I log in with the student in just a moment, you'll get to see where that, how that appears and, and what it looks like. Um, and then click Submit. So because, it, again, was a score rubric, it put the point values in, and now I've gone on to the next student, and I can view the student's submission and, and put in feedback um, and so forth. So it's really easy to grade using the rubric as, the, um, you know, as a faculty member. Now I'm going to quickly, as we prepare to wrap up here, I'm going to log out of Blackboard as a faculty. I'm going to log in as this student, Louisa Alcott, and we'll take a look at what she sees. So when she logs into her course, let me get the username and password in here correctly. Um, and so we're going to go back into that course, and um, she's going to go in as if uh, we're logged in now as Louisa, and we're going to go to the My Grades area that we have within the, the course menu. And you get a sense of, of what it looks like for um, the students. So here's, here's Louisa and her two graded assignments here. Um, here's her book review that submitted a paper and the expectations discussion. Um, at the top level, you'll notice that here is the score. So she got 9 out of 10 on the book review. When I click on the comments link, if you remember um, the, the sample rubric, I put feedback in two places. I put it inside. Um, I put it outside of the rubric by the score, and then I also put it inside of the rubric um, at the end. And so when the student clicks comments, they see comments in both places. So it's really convenient for you. You can put that feedback in either spot, when you're in the rubric or outside of the rubric, and the student will be able to very quickly see that when they click on the comments within the score. Then the view rubric link actually will pop open the rubric uh, for that as student, and they can see exactly how they performed, and then Again, if you put feedback in the rubric, that feedback shows up um, down at the bottom. So here you can see in the sample, um, the feedback is at the bottom, and then the uh, green check marks with the uh, colors, you can, it's very easy and visual to see uh, how the student performed here uh, within, the, uh, within the course on that particular assignment. Um, so in a nutshell, that's, that's the quick overview of rubrics. And I'm going to go ahead and end the application sharing here. And uh, just take a look in the text chat. If you have questions, um, as we're uh, preparing to wrap up here, you can um, put those in the text chat. Um, again, I, I will point you to the uh, rubrics tutorials and guides that we have online and encourage you to um, take advantage of that and, and refer to that as you have questions. Uh, this archive will be available here as, long as, as well as the tutorials that we have.
Um, we have a, a rubrics quick guide, which is just a two-page reminder of those steps. So this is one of the resources that you can download um, at this uh, URL that I've provided for you in the text chat. Um, also, I mentioned the blackboard.com slash rubrics, and I'll direct you to that again if you want to get some sample rubrics. I'd encourage you to go and, and download the samples from there. Um, and, and again, as you go there, just click on the download now button that you'll see next to the particular sample. Save it onto your computer as a zip file, and then you can import that into your Blackboard course. And if you have any questions, uh, you can follow up with me and let me know. Uh, a lot of potential. You're right, Steve. Um, great feedback about course assessments. Um, you're right, and everything can be aligned. So at the program level, to your point, Steve, here in the text chat about being aligned, um, if a department uh, or a program uh, chose to uh, standardize their rubrics uh, for their assignments, for their assessments based on the program outcomes that they have, they could use those rubrics directly within those courses uh, at the course level, and it makes for a really powerful uh, set of metrics there. So um, just as a reminder, we do have upcoming programs about using other Blackboard features. I encourage you to, to take advantage of them if you'd like. We have well over, I think we're over 80 of our workshops uh, have been done online in our archives, so you can go back in time and learn all about uh, best practices in online teaching, uh, teaching using different Blackboard tools and tips, uh, and those are all available on our Blackboard uh, Faculty Development Programs Archives page um, that you can find uh, easily on our, our website. And uh, simply click on the uh, Archives uh, link in the course menu, or our uh, website menu, and it'll take you to this Program Archives page. And of course, faculty development, we are on Facebook and Twitter. If you want to keep in touch with us there, we'd encourage you to, uh, to follow us there. So with that, thank you so much, everybody, for joining. I'm going to put in the text chat uh, very quickly here just a, a quick link to uh, an evaluation of today's workshop. Uh, before you sign off, if you could just click on that and quickly uh, give us feedback on today's session and what was most helpful. We really value your feedback, and it helps guide future sessions that we offer. So with that, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, don't hesitate to get back in touch with me or any of our staff if you have further questions as you continue to teach using Blackboard. Have a great day, everybody. And uh, we look forward to seeing you again in another session, hopefully, in the near future.